Ruhe! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come, Silver. Let's go, Rick I am Silver. Hooray! The big Butterfield stage came into the station at San Pedro and swayed to a halt. The wheels had barely stopped turning when the door of the stage was thrown open and a tall, gray-haired United States Marshal alighted. He stood beside the vehicle to help a middle-aged woman passenger. Here we are, ma'am. You tired? Uh, no. Watch that step there. You're a wonder, ma'am. I'm more used to travel than you are, and yet I don't I think... I can't think of rest until I see the man who killed John Haynes. You won't get away this time. I'm going to make sure of that, Marshal. That man at the door of the station is wearing a sheriff's badge. Hey, this way, ma'am. Sheriff. Oh, howdy. Howdy, ma'am. Oh, I see you're wearing the United States Marshal's badge, mister. You're Sheriff Duncan? Yeah. This is Mrs. Boyle. A pleasure, ma'am. Glad to meet you, Sheriff. Sheriff, Mrs. Boyle's husband was murdered last week. Mm, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, he was killed over at Big Rock by a crook that tried to steal his cash. Mrs. Boyle can identify him. Why'd you come here? There's a man living near here who answers the description of the killer. He'll tell me what he looks like, and I'll tell you if he's around here. And if he is, we'll get him, killer or not. Well, he's a small man, Sheriff. Uh, just about the size of that boy standing over there. Uh, just a second, ma'am. Bobby! Huh? You savvy what happens to young mavericks that don't mind their own business? Well, golly, I... All right, now, Vamoose. I'm going, Sheriff. Better keep going, Bobby, till you get home. Don't stop to spread anything you heard. You two, Injun, are on your way now. No standing around the station unless you're waiting for someone. Ah, uh, we go. The redskin likely didn't savvy what we were talking about, but that youngster was sure all is. Oh, Bobby's all right, ma'am. Always underfoot, though. I feel kind of sorry for him. Poor kid is no folks at all. Fella named Sam Jenkins looks after him. <laughs> Not that Bobby don't think that the sun just about rises and sets in Sam. Well, this isn't getting us any closer to the killer, Sheriff. Ma'am, I want to hear the rest of what you've got to say. Suppose you two come over to my office. All right, Sheriff. <laughs> Mr. 
Neither the sheriff nor the marshal suspected that the Indian who had been at the San Pedro station was the companion of the masked man whose tip had brought Mrs. Boyle and the marshal to the community. It was Tonto who hurried out of town to join the Lone Ranger in camp. Oh, Scott. Oh, oh, oh Scott. Oh, oh. Did you learn anything in town, Tonto? Uh, marshal and woman come in stage. Talk to sheriff. Good. Woman tell sheriff what killer looked like. Sheriff Duncan may not recognize Sam from the description, but now that Mrs. Boyle's in town, she'll identify him. Come on, Toto. We'll go and get him. Maybe lawmen capture killer. We'll take no chances. Sam's escaped the law too often. Easy, big fellow. One fellow there. Come on, scout. In the meantime, Bobby had also reached his destination on the outskirts of town. His home was a small, neat cabin five miles south of San Pedro. It was a home he shared with Sam Jenkins. Oh, oh boy, ho, oh, oh there. Sam! Hey, Sam, where are Here you? Here I am, kid. I was waiting for you. Hey, Sam, you know what I just saw in town? Oh, hold on there, kid. Oh, but Sam... Just calm down. Whatever you saw, I can wait for a minute. I got something to show you. Come here. What is it? Something you've been wanting lately. Oh, Sam, Come on, it's... take a look. Gosh. <laughs> oh, it is. Sam, you bought him. It's the horse I saw at Dad Benson's ranch. Oh, golly. He's the finest horse I ever saw. He's yours, Bobby. Oh, gosh. You hear that? He knows me already. Uh, yep. Oh, golly, Sam. Oh, gee... You're too good to me, huh? Oh, shucks, kid. Forget it. Oh, gee, I can't, Sam. I guess nobody that taken me in and has been as good to me as you have. No, folks wouldn't have let a sprout like you go homeless for long. Them five years have gone awful fast. But if it hadn't been for me that found you, somebody else would have. I'm glad they didn't. So am I, kid. You like this critter, eh? Oh, he's great. Was this what you went to your claim for? To get the money to buy him from Dad Benson? Huh? Oh, sure. Sure, kid. Gosh, I, I'd sure like to go to your claim with you sometime. Oh, maybe, maybe. Say, didn't you start to tell me about something you saw in town? Oh, gosh, yeah. I almost forgot it. A United States Marshal's in San Pedro. Yeah? Well, come on. we better get back inside and start rustling up some grub. Uh-huh. And Sam, you know why he's here? I can't say as I do. He's after a killer. He came in on the stage with a woman from Big Rock, and he talked to the sheriff. From Big Rock? Kid, did you say Big Rock? Oh, yeah. Who are they after? Did you hear him say? What did the marshal bring the woman with him for, huh? Oh, Sam, what's wrong? What are you looking like that for? Huh? Oh, sorry, kid. I, I'm just interested, that's all. What happened? Well, I, I didn't hear much. The marshal was telling Sheriff Duncan that, that the lady's husband was held up in Big Rock, that the skunk shot him in the back, and it... I thought you said you were interested, Sam. Oh, I just thought of something, kid. But, Sam... Something i got to take care of. You fix the grub. I'll be back later. But, Sam... Sam, wait! Sam! Sam Jenkins dismounted in front of a crudely built lean-to in a wood some distance from his cabin. He built no fire. He just sat there for more than an hour. It was almost dusk. The horse. Whoever you are, rein up. You're covered. Me, Sam. It's Bobby. Bobby. Ho, ho, boy. Ho, ho, there. Ho. Kid, what made you look for me here? Sam, it was you the marshal was talking about. Did they come to the cabin? Yeah. Gosh, kid, I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything, Sam. I don't believe what they're saying about you. You don't? No. I know you wouldn't kill anybody. You're too good to do that. Now, wait a minute, Bobby. I... Kid, I hate to tell you this, but it's the truth. I... Well, I was always afraid you'd find out about me. Oh, no. Had to come sooner or later. You, you mean you, 
He admit you're a crook? Kid, first I want to tell you that I'm not trying to whitewash myself. I'm no good. Never was. I was running from the law when I first found you. What? Well, Sam, it... No, it, it's not true. Yeah, I felt like a skunk for fooling you. But it's just as true as I'm standing here, kid. I've felt about you like a man had feel toward his own son. No matter how bad he was, he wouldn't want his boy to know it. And he wouldn't want to give up his boy either. Well, that's the way it's been with me. I ought to be shot for oh, it. Oh, Sam, don't say things like that. You, you're covering up for someone. You're trying to protect somebody. That's why you're taking the blame for all this. I know it. You don't believe me, kid? No. Golly, Sam, I, I know what you like. It. You gotta go with it. They'll catch you. Yeah, sure. But, uh, well, no matter what comes out, you're not mad at me. I don't believe you're a crook, Sam. I just don't believe it. All right, Bobby. Here, boy. Oh, Sam, take my horse. The one you bought me. He'll give you a better chance. Well, he is a faster horse. Hey, Sam. Huh? I, I'm kind of cold. I, anyway, you, you can travel faster without that floppy hat and loose coat. You want my hat and coat? Sure thing, son. Here, take him. I didn't think it was that cold. Thanks, Sam. Steady, boy. Well, Bobby, I guess this is goodbye. Goodbye, Sam. I... Oh, gosh. Don't worry about me being so anxious, Sam. No matter what people think, I, I know you're all right. Thanks, kid. Get up there. Sam didn't realize the extent of Bobby's simple loyalty. He didn't know that the boy had asked for his hat and coat and switched horses in the hope of drawing the sheriff's party away on a false trail. Sam had been gone for some time when Marshal Hanlon, the sheriff, and the deputy approached lean-to in the woods. Bobby had remained there. And when the lawmen were near, he leaped to Sam's horse and dashed away. Get up! Get up there! Your gun's handy in case he's playing possum. That's right. Keep him covered from here. He's a killer. The critter's dangerous. Slow down. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy, 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 boy. Easy, boy. <sighs> he looks a darn sight smaller when he's laying there on the ground than when he's on the business end of a six gun. We'll close in on him slow. We got you, Sam. Wait. Rain up, Sheriff. Ho, ho, ho. What's wrong? Someone's coming this way. Hear that, Sheriff? Yeah. Don't take your eyes off of Sam, deputy. I won't, Sheriff. This might be a trick of some kind. And yeah. yeah, there's more than one rider. Can you make them out? Not yet, but they better not try anything. They'll stop late if they do. Seems to be three of them. Yeah. There's something familiar about that one horse, the big one. Marshal Hamlin! Hi there! Rain up! Sheriff, the man on the white horse. Boy, Thunder, look. Hold him, hold him. He's a big fella. Get off that horse, Jacob. Marshal, I think you want this man for murder. Jenkins? What in blazes? A masked man. We were on the way here to get him and met him on the trail. You? You're Sam Jenkins? That's right. But we shot... Great Scott, Sheriff. Who did we shoot? Did you shoot someone? That critter over there on the ground. We mistook him for Sam and let him have it. I wonder how bad he's hurt. Sheriff. Sheriff, you, you shot Bobby. We saw him wearing your hat and coat and riding your horse. You shot Bobby. You shot the kid. And he never did nothing wrong in all his life. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Sheriff Duncan was furious when he found he'd made the mistake of shooting the boy Bobby instead of Sam Jenkins. The grim-faced lawman was determined not to make another error. By thunder, you won't get away this time, Jenkins. You yellow low-down polecat kid. Kid, say something. Take it easy, Jenkins. Otto will dress those wounds. Is he... Is it bad, Indian? Uh, him hit bad. Now I savvy why he done it. Telling me he was cold... Asking for my hat and coat. Wanting me to take his horse. I never knew what it was he was thinking. It wasn't much light. Seeing him on that horse and with your hat and coat, I was sure it was you. Huh. Careful, engine. Don't hurt him. He's unconscious, Jenkins. He won't feel the pain. All right, Sam. You're coming along with me. Boy, I need doctor quick. We'll take him into town right now. You carry him on your horse, deputy. All right, Sheriff. Steady, uh, quick. Lift him easy now, Injun. Uh, no, I'd lift him up, Sheriff. I got him. Hey, now start for town. Take him to Doc Maxwell right away. Right, Sheriff. Poor oh, kid. If you think he did it for me, I should have known. Jenkins, <laughs> there's been a regular one-man crime wave over in Big Rock. I admit it. You'll find plenty to loot in my house. Sam, you're going back to town like the marshal said. You'll ride between us. That's for you, mister. Yes? I don't know who you are, but you're wearing a mask, and that's downright suspicious. Just a minute, Sheriff. In spite of the fact that this man's masked, we're obligated to him for capturing Sam Jenkins. Yes. On top of that, he's the one I met in Big Rock. The one who told me we'd find Jenkins around here. You sure of that? Yes, I can't mistake that voice. I think we'll let the masked man and his Indian friend go on their way. Well, if you say so. I do. Now, let's get going. i got to get into town and see about the kid. If anything happens to him... You'll get into town, but you're heading for the jail till that stage comes through. We're leaving on it tomorrow morning for Big Rock. Adios, stranger. We'll meet again, Marshal. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him. Well, Tonto, we'd better be on our way. Where are we go? To San Pedro. I want to see if there's anything we can do for Bobby. Come on, Silver. You're not the scout. Bobby was taken to the home of Dr. Maxwell in the town of San Pedro while Sam spent the night in jail. The following morning, the marshal took the killer aboard the stage for Big Rock and the sheriff went to inquire about Bobby. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were at an open window where they could hear what the doctor said. I tell you, Sheriff, the boy can live if he wants to. But he doesn't seem to want to. Hear that, Tonto? No. It isn't essentially fatal. Well, what's the matter with him, Doc? He doesn't seem to want to get well. Don't want to get He's well. Sorry for that no-good killer. Huh? Yes, he won't believe that Sam's as bad as the law says. Hmm. Doggone it, Doc. Bobby's a good kid. Is there something we can do for him? Listen, Tonto. I yeah. don't know, no. Sheriff. Doc, let me talk to him. Hey, come into the next room. Tonto. Let's move to the next window and hear what Bobby has to say. Uh-huh. Well, Bobby. Hello, Sheriff. I, I understand you're going to get well. What's the use? Oh, now, son, where's your spunk? The, the hang, Sam. Now, son, you've got to forget Sam. I don't want you to wa- forget Sam. He, he took me in when I didn't have anyone. Brought me up. Taught me reading and... And writing and with Sam gone, I, I want to die. Did you see, I want to be where Sam is. <laughs> yeah, better leave him, Sheriff. Doggone it, dog. What are we going to do about him? Yeah, I wish I knew. Do you think that he he's won't gonna... sleep and he won't eat? Sheriff, he won't live unless he wants to. After overhearing the conversation, the Lone Ranger and Tonto took off along the trail in pursuit of the stage. Under the 
couple of hours later. The marshal and his prisoner were alone in the big butter field, and the lawman kept a close watch on Sam. Then suddenly... Driver, what's the trouble? Now hold up. Masked man the redskin. Get up there. Get up. Wait, I know those two. Pull up, driver. Pull up, I tell you. Whoa, 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 boy. Whoa. Hi there. Hold on, hold on. Where is he now? Marshal, I've got to talk to you about Bobby Gillis. Tell you big pull up. What about him? How's he getting on? There's a very good chance that the boy will die. Die? Oh, he can't die. There's got to be some way to save him. He's too young to die. Too fine a lad. Sam, shut up. But Marshal... Let me finish. The wound won't kill him. What do you mean? He doesn't want to live. Why not? He's got everything to live for. He feels that you've been misjudged, Sam. Me? (laughs) Misjudged? When I get this crook to Big Rock and let a few witnesses take a look at him... There'll be a string of charges as long as your arm. Nevertheless, Bobby's whole life is built around the man who cared for him these past few years. He doesn't want to live without Sam. Doggone it all. You mean to say there's a chance he'll die? Just because he don't want to live without Sam? Yes, Marshal. Hang it all, Marshal. There's got to be some way to make that lad want to live. There is. How? It's up to you and the Marshal, Sam. You can do it if you've got enough courage. What's courage got to do with it? My plan's going to take more courage than anything you've ever done. Furthermore, we've got to have the help of the marshal. Uh, I'm not making any promises, mister, but I'll admit you've got me curious. Just what is your plan? The Lone Ranger talked for some time before he and Tonto turned their horses and hit the back trail. It was late afternoon when they reined up in front of Dr. Maxwell's home. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Stay with the horses, Toto. I'll talk to the doctor and the sheriff. Sheriff's horse there. Him inside with the doctor. Yes, I know. What's that? Man! Steady, doctor. Don't be afraid. Oh, so you're back again. Yes. I'm here to talk to Bobby. Perhaps to save his life. But he don't Sheriff, see... I'm here with the marshal's permission. You and the doctor come to the next room and listen to what I tell the boy. Well, Dad, well, all let's right. do as he says, Sheriff. I'm sure there's nothing to lose. Well, all right then. What's new about Sam? Huh? Bobby. Your mask. The last time I saw you, you were unconscious. Who are you? Bobby, you want to be with Sam, don't you? Yeah. Even though he's in jail. I don't care where he is. I want to be with him. Who's sidekicks? Partners. If Sam hangs up, I'm gonna hang with him. <laughs> You're not strong enough for the trip to Big Rock. I, I couldn't go there anyhow. Yes, you can. I can? I have the promise of the marshal. As soon as you're strong enough to travel, you can join Sam in prison. Not now. Wait, hold on. That kid in prison, Sheriff, why? I have the word of the marshal. I'll get well. I promise I will if I can be with Sam. Bobby's interest in life was renewed. Even the doctor was surprised at the speed with which the boy's strength returned. In three days, he was able to board the morning stagecoach and start. And accompanied by Dr. Maxwell and the sheriff, they reached Big Rock. Sam, the boy's here. Oh, he is? You think you can go through with the masked man's plans? I'll have him brought in. He wants to be jailed in this cell. Locked up. Just so as we can be together. That's right. Well, if he thinks that much about me, I guess I can muster up the courage to... to do what the masked man suggested. It'll be the hardest thing I ever did. Bring the boy in. All right. Sheriff, bring Bobby in here. Coming, Marshal. I'll leave you two alone. Yeah. Well, Bobby, this is the cell. Sam. Oh, gosh, Sam, it's good to see you. Shut the door. Here you are, Bob. That's what you wanted. Go on, Sheriff. Well, you ornery little squirt. I got you in here where I can deal with you. Sam. What's the matter? Why, you little troublemaker. Sam, what's got into you? You, you're the cause of all my trouble. If I hadn't hung around this neck of the woods and making out like I liked you, I'd never been caught. Making out? Yeah, you thought I liked you. Why, you little pipsqueak. 
I was fooled by you, that's what. I was fooled into thinking you had a lot of cash coming to you from an uncle. Cash I aim to get my hands on. That's the only reason I had time for you. What a sucker I was. What a fool. No, no Sam, listen. What's the matter with you? You, you mean you, you were just acting all these years? Acting as if you liked me? Sure, I was acting. But I'm not acting now. I'm finishing you off. And I'm getting out of here. No, no Sam. I'll don't. get you, you little don't scrap. Sam. No, help, help. Get, get back here, Sam. Get back here. I'll shoot. Come on, Bob, this way. Sheriff, lock the door on Sam. Right. Bob, well, well, what in the world? Golly, Doc, I, I never saw Sam like that before. He, he was going to kill me. He sure was. It was a narrow escape. Good thing we hadn't left the building or we wouldn't have heard you. Doc. Yeah. Doc. Sam's been hating me all these years. He, he was friendly just because I thought he had some money coming to me. Golly, I, I think I was sorry for him. Yep, yep. Bob, it's lucky you came here. You might have gone on feeling sorry for him. That's no good, Henri. Golly, Doc, I, I had him sized up wrong. Yep. Funny how things work out, Bob. If you'd gone on living with Sam and he hadn't been caught, you might have grown up an outlaw just like him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I might have. Uh, Bob, why don't you live with me? With you? Sure. You might grow up to be a doctor. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh, Marshal, you hear that? Yeah. It's good sense, lad. <clears throat> well, come on, Bobby. We'll go outside and wait for the stage to take us home. Adios, Marshal. Adios, Bobby. Sheriff. Well, Marshal, looks like things worked out. I, uh, Sam was just telling me. Sam did at least one good deed before he goes to hang. Yeah? Tell me, Marshal, who was that masked man that suggested the, uh, the good deed. Sheriff, he's known as the Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.